Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this second video in this series, we're going to continue considering the question, what is electricity? In a previous video, we considered the structure of an atom, we considered what that looked like, and we looked at the various parts that made up an atom. What we're now going to do is to continue and look at a very specific atom. We're going to look at this atom. Now, this atom that we've got on the screen here is one that's very dear to the heart of electricians. It's a material that we use all the time. This is an atom of copper. Now, you'll notice on this copper atom that there are 29 protons, 29 neutrons, and really importantly, 29 electrons all uh, whizzing around the outside of the atom. So we discussed in a previous video how atoms are made up of uh, two parts. You have the nucleus that sits in the middle of the atom, and then you have the shells that are wrapped around the outside. Now each shell is where the electrons sit, and each shell can only accommodate a certain number of electrons before it's considered to be full, and we need to go to the next layer. So looking at our copper atom, you can see that the first three shells, or layers of electrons, are all full. They've all got their maximum quantity of electrons. If you look at shell number four though, you can see there that there's just one electron sitting on that outer shell and it's just all there by itself uh, with no other electrons on that shell at all. Now because there are so many complete layers between that one electron and the nucleus, it means that that electron has only got a very, very casual relationship with its parent atom. And that means it will very easily jump from one atom to another atom. Now when that happens, it leaves the parent atom slightly positively charged because now there's more protons in the nucleus than there are electrons going around the outside. Now what that means is that that uh, copper atom that's slightly positively charged will then have a tendency to draw other electrons to it to fill that kind of gap that exists in its outer shell now. We refer to that gap left behind by the electron as a hole uh, and we'll need to understand that in a little bit more depth uh, in a future video. So if we could look inside a block of copper such as we've got here, if we could zoom in close enough so that we could see the atoms inside that block of copper and also the electrons that are uh, on the outer shell of the copper atom, we'd see that those individual electrons are actually, they're kind of in a constant motion. They're always drifting from one atom to another. And that effect is something that's referred to as the electron C, like the ocean type C, because there are a number of free electrons that are just drifting about at random inside that piece of copper there. So that's all well and good, but that leads us on to our next question, which is how can we get those electrons working for us and how does this all relate to electricity? So let's just summarize what we've learned in this video. We've looked at the structure of a copper atom. We've seen that it's got that all important 29th electron on its outer shell, which only has a very vague relationship with its parent atom. We've seen that that electron can be easily convinced to move from one atom to another atom. And we know that inside a piece of uh, conductive material such as copper, we know that there are these free electrons just randomly drifting about from atom to atom. In our next video, we're going to see how we can harness those electrons and make them work for us.